from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Mr. Dollar, my name is Parley Barron. I'm calling from Hollywood. Hollywood? Uh, what insurance company, Mr. Barron? None. You handle all investigations for Eastern Liability and Trust. Yeah, I guess I do. Well, I am sure that they'll be calling you in shortly. What about, sir? A little matter of embezzlement. Oh? Nearly $10,000 that's been stolen from the Berkeley Furniture Manufacturing Company there in Hartford. You're connected with Berkeley Furniture? No, no, actually I am not. Then what's your connection with this embezzlement? I suggest you check with Berkeley and, of course, the insurance company. Of course. When you have learned the facts from them, I am sure you will find it of the utmost importance to contact me. You sent in Hollywood. Yes. Goodbye, Mr. Dollar. Yeah, but where in Hollywood? Hello? Hello? Oh, he's a lot of help. Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Eastern Liability and Trust Company Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Hollywood mystery matter. Expense account item one, ten cents for a phone call to Hal Spidel, who is my regular contact at Eastern Liability and Trust. Well, hi, Johnny. Nice to talk to you again. Yeah, nice to talk to you, Hal. Listen, have you received a report of loss from the Berkeley Furniture Manufacturing Company? Well, they're a client of ours, but no. What makes you ask a thing like that? A phone call I just got. They called you direct? Well, somebody did. A man by the name of Pye... Wait a second. Yes, Miss Turner. Who? Hold everything, Johnny. I'm holding. Hey, what did you say? When? We'll find out how much. Johnny. Yeah? You've got an assignment, boy, and it's Berkeley Furniture Manufacturing Company. Embezzlement? Yes. 10,000? how you found out about it. Listen, they just found out about it themselves. So get on over there and see what goes, will you? Hal, will do. Yeah, my informant, the man who'd called me, had really known something. But how to locate him? Item two, a dollar forty-five taxi to the Berkeley plant on the northwest edge of town. It's a small company, but an old one. When I flashed my credentials to the receptionist, I was immediately shown into the office of the high and mighty himself. Well, well I must say, your insurance company acts very promptly, Mr. Dollar. Sit down, sir. Thanks, Mr. Berkeley. I'll get straight to the point, sir. We've suffered a considerable loss. Yeah, so I understand from Hal Spidel at Eastern Liability and Trust, $10,000, wasn't it? Oh, yes, nearly $10,000. But I don't recall mentioning the amount to Mr. Spidel. In any event, Mr. Dollar, what I want is that money back. I don't care what you do with the thief. All right, have you any idea who took it, Mr. Berkeley? Uh, I certainly have. A young, great Who, oh, sir? One, one of our bookkeepers, a gentleman who has been with the company over 30 years. A, what are you smiling about, Mr. Dollar? <laughs> well, he's stolen this money from you, but you still call him a gentleman. Because I always thought he was. Did his job, never complained. That's your measure of a gentleman, huh? Me? Eh? What's that? How much money did he earn, Mr. Berkeley? Sixty, sixty-five dollars a week. What difference does it make? Just uh, wondered. An old man living alone? There's plenty for him. Unless, of course, he was gambling, something like that. Gambling? Him? <laughs> of course not. He never had enough money. Trouble at home, maybe? Is he married? No. He'd never be able to support a wife. After 30 years with your company? I paid him as much as I thought he was worth. Yeah. Or as little as you thought you could get away with. That is really no concern of yours. Return of the money is. All right. Where does he live, Mr. Berkeley? In a small apartment on the north side of town. And when did you last see him? Yesterday, yesterday morning. Said he had to see his doctor in the afternoon. Yes, it's against my usual practice, but I let him off. Mm -hmm. But of course you decided to dock his pay. Naturally. I have to keep discipline in a place like this. Oh, sure. And this morning when I opened the safe, I discovered that the money was missing. Nine thousand nine hundred and eighty-four seventy-five. The case that we had on hand for emergencies. <laughs> I also discovered that he hadn't come to the office. 
So I phoned his apartment. And? I learned that our respected gentleman bookkeeper left town yesterday afternoon bag and baggage. That doesn't necessarily mean that he took the money. I'd like to know why not. Well, was he the only one who had access to the safe? Of course not. All of the bookkeepers have. How many of them? Others, I mean. Three. But you think for one minute they'd dare take that money and then come back here and face me? Uh, maybe you got a point there. What? Have you notified the police of this loss? No. I prefer that the whole thing be kept as quiet as possible for the sake of my company's reputation. Please, remember that, sir. Whatever you say, Mr. Berkeley. That's why I have no desire to prosecute him. Why I'll refuse to even file charges as long as I get the money back. Yeah. Sir. Now, what's his address? 11231 North Maple Street. 11231. But as I told you, he isn't there. He's left town. Yeah, you told me. How old a man is he? In his 60s. But what difference does that make? Oh, and uh, Mr. Dollar. Yeah? Just how did you happen to know about this so soon? I mean the amount that was stolen. From somebody who called me on the phone. Oh? Somebody who apparently knew a good deal about it. If I can locate him, get in touch with him, he can probably be a lot of help in running down this... this um... <laughs> Come to think of it, you haven't told me what his name is. The bookkeeper? The embezzler? Yeah. Barron, sir. What? Yes. Parley Barron. <laughs> Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the Hollywood mystery matter. So the embezzler of the $10,000 was Parley Barron, the same man who'd called me on the phone. Apparently called me before the company even knew the money was missing. And he'd had the audacity to inform me that I should contact him. Yeah. Somewhere in Hollywood. Which is like saying the needle is somewhere in the haystack. Item three, two fifty for a taxi to the little apartment house on North Maple Street. I paid off the driver, then walked into the open foyer and looked for the usual bank of mailboxes to find out which apartment was Parley Barron's. Hey, you want me to wait for you, Mister? No, that's no, all right, driver. You go ahead if you want to. Hey, well, let's see. Nelson, Davis, Paris. Oops. Oh, excuse me, sir. That's all right. Uh, Spalding, Pierce, Taxi. Robeson. Taxi, wait a minute. Oh, here we are. Baron, apartment 103. Just a minute, young man. Are you a salesman? Oh, no. I was just looking up the apartment number of Mr. Parley Baron. Well, he ain't here, mister. You're sure? No, sir. He left your bag and baggage yesterday afternoon. Have you any idea where he went? No. Who are you? Cops or something? Oh, here. My credentials. Johnny Dollar, insurance. If you yeah, that's case. right. Now, look, I want you to let me into his apartment. Well, yes, sir, right this way. Uh, something wrong, Mr. Dollar? Ah, uh, just a routine investigation. No, oh, well, I was sure he'd done nothing wrong. Oh, why do you say that? Why, well, nice, quiet old man like him, why should he? Only excitement he ever has is when his niece comes to visit with him. His niece? Yes, sir. Name's Virginia. Ginny Locker, wonderful girl. <laughs> sort of drops in here to look after him once in a while, cook him a good meal. <laughs> now, here we are. Hmm. Well, it sure looks like he left in a hurry. Closet's open, doors pulled out. Where can I find this niece you mentioned? Why, didn't you see her when you just came in? That girl who bumped into me down in the lobby, that was Ginny Lockhart? Well, it must have been. I guess she dropped in for a visit with her uncle, found him gone, and then lit out again. And I didn't have sense enough to get a good look at her. Well, now, here's a picture of her, mister. Sent it to him from her vacation last winter. Vacation, huh? Blue sky and palm trees. Down Hollywood, I understand. Is that where she's headed for now? Well, now you got me there. Wait a minute. Yes? What's that you picked up, mister? That was a note, I guess. Yeah, it's addressed to her. Ginny, my dear. The doctor you had me see has finally told me the truth. Is this his handwriting? Yeah, that is all right. He's finally told me the truth. I have less than a week to live. Oh, my, my. And so for the first time in my life, except for some happy moments with you, I'm going to really live. Make up for some of the things I've had to miss all these years. Well, say now. Yes. You may have some idea where I've gone, but please, please, dear, don't try to follow me. 
You're loving Hollywood. Yeah, like I said, that's what... And she, she ran off with the taxi I had. Oh, you want me to call you a taxi, mister? I sure do, brother, and fast. <laughs> Item 4750 for a trip to the airport that should have got the cabbie locked up for life. We ran every stoplight along the way. So what happened? I got there just in time to see a plane taking off. And the man at the ticket counter politely informed me that Virginia Lockhart was among the passengers headed for New York. And where would she go from there? Hollywood. I'd bet my last nickel on it. Yeah, and she could lead me to the man I was after. I checked the schedules of all the airlines leaving New York. If I took the next plane out of Hartford, I could barely make a flight out of New York to the West Coast. In other words, Hollywood. Item 516280 for a through ticket. When we arrived in New York, where I had only seconds to change planes, I was the first one off. And then I saw her. She was boarding a plane from another ramp. By breaking a couple of records for the 100-yard dash and pulling my way through the gate, I managed to climb aboard just as the doors were being closed. A quick flash at my credentials kept the stewardess from throwing me off, and in a couple of minutes, we were airborne. Now... I guess we'd better make some arrangement about your ticket, sir. Ah, uh, tickets? Yes, sir. Oh, no, here, I already have it. Here you are. Oh, thank you. I'll just... Mr. Dollar? Yeah? I'm sorry, but this ticket is for Los Angeles. Well, sure, sure, that's where I'm going. Well, not on this plane, I'm afraid. Uh, this is a non-stop flight to Miami. What? Yes, sir. Miami, Florida. <laughs> Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Now, act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the Hollywood mystery matter. Wait a minute. This plane is headed for Florida? Yes, sir. Non-stop flight to Miami. But I thought this was... Look, I gotta get to Los Angeles, to Hollywood. I'm sorry, Mr. Dollar. Oh, not half as sorry as I am. So what do I do now? Well, I'm afraid there isn't much you can do. So why don't you go up in the cabin where there's one extra seat and, well, just relax and enjoy it. <sighs> okay, miss. Great. I'd been so sure it was Virginia Lockhart I'd seen climb aboard this plane that she'd lead me to her uncle in Hollywood, to wherever he was in Hollywood. So what happened? I was stuck aboard a plane to Miami. All right, I took the advice of the stewardess and walked forward into the cabin to find a seat. And for once, luck was with me. The one vacant seat in that whole plane was right next to, yeah, you guessed it, to Jenny Lockhart. But why Miami? Could she possibly know that I was on the trail of Parley Barron? Was this a trick to lead me off his trail? I decided there was only one thing to do, play it like I hadn't the least idea in the world who she was, and at the same time, see if I could learn anything from her. As, uh... <clears throat> As long as we're uh, seatmates on this trip, we may as well know each other. My name's Johnny. Uh, Johnny Dollar. Miss, uh... How do you do, Mr. Dollar? Be, uh, kind of nice to get on down south and away from all the snow and cold, won't it? Would, would you like some champagne? I, I understand all I have to do is flag down the stewardess and she'll... Be... Uh, how about it? No. Thank you. Well, uh, excuse me for saying so, but you look worried about something. I'm sure it wouldn't interest you. No, no, maybe not. But, uh, you know, sometimes it does a lot of good to cry on somebody's shoulder, and since we'll probably never see each other again after this trip, and, well, I, I have a good broad shoulder... Thank you, but it's not necessary. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to... Going down to Florida for a vacation? No. I'm going to Florida to try to save somebody's life. Oh? But I'd rather not talk about it. And she didn't. Or did she talk about anything else during the rest of the flight? As we came into Miami, I decided the only thing I could do was transfer to a plane for Los Angeles and hope for the best. But she was my only real lead to Parley Barrett. And if I left her here and went on to Hollywood, so I changed my mind. I decided to stay with her. Item six, nine dollars even for a taxi that followed hers out of Miami airport, then headed north. And where do we end up? Hollywood. Hollywood, Florida. Hollywood by the sea. And the Diplomat Hotel. 
I watched her make inquiries at the desk, heard the clerk tell her room 716. I managed to get an elevator before she did. By the time she reached the door of 716 and raised her hand to knock, I was standing right beside her. Mr. Johnny Dow, what are you doing here? I've been following you, Ginny. Why? To find your uncle, Parley Barron, who stole $10,000 from the company he was working for. He what? Yeah. And unless I'm all wet, this is the door to his suite. You say he stole... I found the note he'd written to you, Ginny, back at his apartment in Hartford. Mr. Dollar, Johnny... Yeah, and it all ties up, including his phone call to me. It was to make me think he was headed for Hollywood, California, to throw me off, give him time. Please listen to me. He said that for once in his life, for the few remaining days of it, he was really going to live it up. So he came here to the Hollywood that you told him about came here for one last desperate, glorious fling. Listen, that's what he thought. But don't you see... And the more I've thought about it, thought about that crummy, penny-pinching outfit that he worked for for 30 miserable years, the more I hated this assignment. Hated the thought of having to deprive that poor old man of this one last chance to get some fun out of life. Because all I know about him is that he's a decent sort who's been taken advantage of. He's a wonderful man. And he's been a good man all his life. Jenny, don't you see, unless I get him, return the $10,000 to his firm... Johnny, listen. He can't have spent $10,000, and I'll make up the rest. <sighs> Sorry, Jenny. You're not the police. You're not the law. But I have a job to do. Does that dirty old company want the money? Or does it want him? Johnny? For the sake of my company's reputation, that's why I have no desire to prosecute you. Why, I'll refuse to even file charges as long as I get the money back. Johnny, if I give you enough to take the $10,000 back to them... Okay. Okay, Jenny, it's a deal. Oh, thank you. I'm awfully glad. And because of something else, Johnny. Oh? The reason why I was looking for him. What do you mean? The new doctor I'd had him go to a couple of weeks ago, my doctor. He gave him a lot of tests. Then Uncle went back to see him yesterday afternoon. Yes, I understand. It was to find out the result of the tests, and the doctor told him wrong. The lab reports had got mixed up. You mean that he isn't going to die? No. And the doctor tried to call him, but couldn't reach him, so he called me. That's why I went to his apartment. But he'd left, so I came down here to try to find him. I tried to tell you, Johnny, because... Well, don't you see he's going to be all right? Well, then, Jenny, I, I guess that leaves only one more thing to be done. What, Johnny? Tell him the good news. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just a sucker for a good-looking girl. And uh, maybe this makes me an accessory to the crime. But you know something? And you can blame it on the holiday season, anything you like. I don't care. Expense account total, including the trip back to Hartford. Well, a happy new year to you, too. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our star will return in just a moment. Because of another adventure in Hollywood, Florida. But that one you'll have to read about in the February issue of Harper's Bazaar. It's just out, so grab a copy, will you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Gene Tatum, Harley Bear, Horace Lewis, Junius Matthews, and Frank Gerstle. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverly speaking. Gunsmoke rises today on the CBS Radio Network. This morning in the Atlanta airport, no one's missing a meal on Mac Wilburn's watch. With 11 restaurants to serve passengers, he's got dining for every destination. And it all started when Mac talked with First Horizon Bank about opening a franchise in the airport. Now it's open for business and cleared for takeoff. First Horizon Bank. Let's find a way. Go to firsthorizon.com slash Mac. First Horizon Bank, member FDIC. FDIC.